Aha, dinky do there you all are, a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, and we are, of course, live on Facebook Live, one of the world's great broadcast platforms. Here we go, come and join me. We've only got one hour, one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment for not just one nation, but for every nation, of course. This is show number 57. Send me lots of hearts, send me lots of thumbs up, send me lots of hiyas, all that sort of stuff, and come and join us. It's a very, very big international show. It's the world's top talk show, and as I say, we only have one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment right across the world globally. The potential audience for the show is 1.8 billion people, so I am reliably informed. Let's see how near to that we can actually get. Scotty my man says Stevie McKenzie, Spike Nesmith is watching Dinky Doo Spike Nesmith, one of the two T-double-O grumpy critics. Scotty David Cassidy died, yes I know, I was very sorry to hear that. Andy McCrory, Charles McLaughlin, hi Scotty, Gerald Mackay Mackay, Angie Thompson's watching, Gaz Raleigh Jones and Steve Burrows. That news though about David Cassidy, there seemed to be some doubt earlier as to uh, how factual that was. Good evening Scotty Dinky Doo, says Andy. Hello Andy, good evening and Dinky Doo to you, you're watching Scotty McClue spread the word. Tell Tem to tell Tem to tell Tem to tell Tem about Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live just for you. Two great subjects for discussion tonight, of course. One is should the Brexiteers be the only people who pay for Brexit if Britain goes ahead with it. Um, I don't know. Uh, somebody jog my memory, says Gaz. Alfred James Wright, excellent to have you with us. William Redford, Martin Owens, Jerry Carty, and Michael McGuigan. Wonderful stuff. You're all watching Scotty McClue with the World's Top Talk Show. First Lord of the Internet, the World's Top Broadcaster, just for you, saying Dinky Doo. Meetings are going on all the time with the top people in television and radio channels to see who wants to take Scotty McClue or back him live on Facebook Live. That's what I've always said. As I receive Dinky Doo Scotty, says Martin. Dinky Doo Martin, lovely to have you with you. Martin Owens, lovely to have you with us, I should say. Now, uh, so main subject for discussion, uh, if Britain does leave the European Union, then uh, should the Brexiteers be charged for the bill, for the, uh, the leaving money? So there you are, the final bill, the divorce bill, as they call it. Uh, good evening, Scotty, says Steve. Hello, bring back Scotty, says Gerald Mackay Mackay. Absolutely, I had a gentleman last night when I popped up and he said, Scotty, I pay my license fee to the BBC. Surely we can have Scotty McClue for that money. So there you are. Yes, I said yes. Go and tell them at the BBC you want Scotty McClue. And we'll pop up on television and radio just for you to say dinky do. <clears throat> Gordon Ritchie, eh? Stephen Short, Alfred James Wright. Eh? Marvellous to have you with us. So there you are. Excellent stuff. So... We're talking tonight about uh, Brexit and what we're saying is if it does take place, because it's not too late to rescind Article 50. It could quite easily all be changed. They could stop the Brexit process just like that because the EU referendum was actually advisory. So there you are. And I think there's still another year. Excellent stuff. James Bauer, uh, good evening, Scotty, from Jim and Lindsay and East Coast Bride TOA, the taxes. Dinky do, East Coast Bride taxes. If you're wanting a taxi in East Coast Bride, then ring East Coast Bride TOA, Taxi Owners Association. Well, if the Conservatives want Brexit, they should pay, not us. So you should just pay if you're a Conservative, if what's being said here. Hi, Scotty from Dublin. Says Gordon Ritchie. Ah, you're out in Dublin there. How marvellous. What a lovely, lovely place to be, Gordon. I know it so well. A lovely, lovely city is Dublin. Um, I think the government does what it likes when the public object to any of the policies, says Martin Owens. Well, they're not really, I think you've got a point, Martin, but they're not really in a position to do as they like because if Mrs May goes to the country again, it would be very interesting to see what happens. I think she should go to the country on the EU referendum again, now that the players have shown their hand 
And now that we know what's involved, and now that we know the risks, there's a fair risk of losing what we've actually got. Um, it's just one Mackay, Scotty. I had to put in two because I got hacked a while ago. Right, Gerald Mackay Mackay, you from now on will be known on the Scotty McClue Show as Gerald Mackay. Marvellous. There we are. Business done. Ben Lucas is watching. Excellent to have you with us. So is Colin Roger. Um, what have we got? Scotty, Ireland's got to have a hard border. It's common sense. How can the Tories think otherwise after Brexit? Would you have all the wee leprechauns skipping into the country? Says Ian Walker. Well, of course, if you go to Ireland right now, Ian, you'll find there isn't really any border. You can just swish up and down to suit yourself. I did get stopped because I had a big car and they thought it was um, a diesel car at the time. It was a petrol car and they were worried about fuel. They wanted just to do a spot check. So all these guys in high-vis jackets appeared from nowhere. Right, we're driving along a country road and they just stepped out and that was that. But in actual fact, it was a petrol car, so they said, oh, sorry about that. On you go, sir. On you go, sir. Not a problem. Uh, so there you go. So I think there's going to be problems with all this border stuff. It's a kind of backward step. Brexit will take us immediately back till about 1940 and then it may take us back to the Stone Age. So there's that. So there we are. Thank you, says Gerald Mackay and uh, lovely to have you with us, Gerald, you see. You've got your own title. Now, there's another thing I want to run past you. If you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome. No matter where you're watching in the world, you're watching the world's top broadcaster and first lord of the internet, Scotty McClue. Capital S, small c, o, double t, i, e. That's the Scotty McClue, capital M, small c, capital C, l, u, e. If you're watching, your job is to tell everybody. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue, live on Facebook Live, just for you, saying dinky do. And of course, share, 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 share this program. We have share points at 9.15, at 9.30, at 9.45, at 10 p.m. But <clears throat> keep sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing. Very, very important. Did anybody watch Blue Planet tonight? How superb is that as a piece of television? So there you are. The Scotty McClue Show up there as well. Good afternoon, Scotty from New Haven. And uh, God's wee bents and steeny bun servant. Say hi to the people of the Ewington Hotel, especially Mark McLaughlin. So Robert Hutton. And uh, he's in New Haven. Fantastic. New Haven CT. And they're in the Ewington Hotel. Dinky do to every day at the Ewington Hotel in New Haven. That's fantastic. Uh, what happened to the free borders in Europe? This didn't happen, Scotty. Well, no, not quite. But I think you need a few checks because remember, Europe's not divided by any natural border. I mean, the English Channel is a natural border. The North Sea is a natural border. The Atlantic is a natural border. The Pentland Firth is a natural border. Do you get my drift? Do you see where I'm coming from? So there you are. I watched Blue Planet. I was upset with what the humans have done to the ocean with plastic. And the whale died, says Angie Thompson. Yes, not good news, Angie, the poor whale. And I saw the uh, plastic ducks not so good in the tummy. Of a whale. George Mullins watching Dinky Doo and Robert Hutton's watching. Helena Innes is watching. One of our finest educationists on the planet. Should the government lower the tax on pubs to stop most of them shutting down? Well, I think there's a social movement that they're turning pubs into antisocial. You see, governments don't like the people sitting, chatting, and discussing the world unless they're on social media where there's a record of it. So everything you talk about in social media, all your governments can have a good look at that and say, oh, well, there's no harm in what she or he is saying on social media, so that's fine. But if you're in the pub, you could be talking about anything. You could be organizing anything. Remember pubs sometimes used to split into different groups. So you had a pub for one group that wasn't terribly um, receptive to another group. I know a public house 
is a public house. But that's just the kind of way society tidied itself up. So I think modern governments are very wary of the public getting together in large numbers, getting a few swallies and having a good old chit chat and a bit of banter when nanny state is not listening in going, ooh, what did they say there? So there you go. Scotty, the new Tory logo, DIY government on a budget. Their days are numbered. A Tory started Brexit, but now Brexit is going to finish the Tories. Yes, if Brexit does go ahead, I think it will break up Britain. You will have broken Britain, right? So there we are. Although we've had broken Britain with the Tories since about 1979. Margaret Thatcher did incredible, long-lasting damage to uh, all of this country except London and the South East. Scotty, would you ever go into the jungle? Well, I was looking, I saw Kezia's going into the jungle, but if you think about it, Scottish Labour's been in the jungle ever since they made the mistake of not backing Scottish independence. And that just, they just woof like a drain. Everything just disappeared. Did you like what I did there? Woof! And that was kind of the end of the Labour Party in Scotland after all these years because they betrayed the people, they betrayed their roots and they, they didn't back Scottish independence. And in fact, a former Labour Prime Minister actually made a big speech against independence and that just struck the wrong chord with the whole world, but in particular with the people of Scotland. That just seemed downright unfair. I mean, I don't see Scottish independence as political, I see it as economic. So there you are. And I think all parties should back Scottish independence. Don't go to pubs. My family's like that. A click in the kitchen, a click in the living room, and a click in the top landing. And you're all like, anyway, she said, I thought, oh, we do go. We're not having it. Uh, so there. So would I go into the jungle? Um, I would quite like to go into the jungle at the moment and uh, having a word, uh, a word with Kezia. So there you are. Have a chat with her and what have you. And also Boris Johnson's father, Stanley. I would have a chat with Stanley and see what's going on. Uh, so there we are. Uh, what else have we got here? George is with us. Excellent. I did get right, as I say, nearly into the final of Big Brother once. But um, because I'd worked in television, they were a little bit anxious about uh, all my knowledge and skills popping up. Would I do what I was told? And McClue's pie is still available, says Martin. Always say aye to a McClue's pie. So there we are. Um, is that who that old guy is, says Angie? Yes, I think that's right. If you look at him, uh, Stanley is, uh, is Boris Johnson's dad. Uh, you used to see him on, on different shows. Uh, good evening, Scotty, says Daniel Jos or Daniel Hoss or Jose. Uh, Daniel Jos, lovely to have you with us. Scotty, the Tory media are fair rattling their sabres over Mr. Salmon. Go over to the dark side. RT, what's your thoughts? Well, all these channels are very, very good to watch to get a balance. I always remember when um, the BBC did their major, major gaff. Um, just around the time of the uh, of the the Scottish referendum, and the BBC's political editor said, "I asked Mr. Salmond, and he didn't answer." And I was at the computer, and I had the television on, and I thought, "Oh, not true," because Mr. Salmond had given a very full and frank answer to the political editor of the BBC at the time, and I thought to myself, "Oh no, now that's that's just wrong." So there you are. So that was when it first came out to me. I thought, no, that level of bias is not really acceptable in, in a news basis, you know. I used to work in news. I know all about it, television news. Everett Clifford has joined us. Excellent to have you. Are you the Reverend Everett Clifford, I ask you? He's got the same hairdo, so there you are. Scotty, we can't have multiple failed economies telling us what to do. Brexit is the way to go, says Charles McLaughlin. Well, Charles, um, we'll, we'll wait and see, we'll suck it and see, but it's, there's no going back at the moment that could actually change it because they're arguing about stuff that we already have. You know, and they're going, what would it cost us to do this? You say, well, it wouldn't have cost you anything if you hadn't done this Brexit nonsense. So there you go. And also it annoys me when people say the country have spoken. The country have not spoken. Just over half 
have spoken. Same with the Scottish referendum. When everyone was going, oh yes, Scotland's spoken. No, 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 Scotland hadn't spoken. Half of Scotland had spoken, just over half. Hearing you loud and clear from the Nobleanese Islands, three miles south from Kirkcaldy, says Ian Walker. Kirkcaldy is the Lang Toon. Am I right? You're supping with the Fifers there. Andy Simpson's watching. Dinky do to you. Uh, we're glad to hear about the booze pricing. Let's see how the undesirables that's always hanging around are going to pay £11 for their chemical cider. So there you are. Danny, dinky do. Yes, I've got you now. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Danny Joseph, lovely to have you with us. Scotty, the, the, the failed economies. Now, let me just address this. This is very, very important. At the moment, you've got all this money, and it brings us on to our second subject for tonight. You've got all this money, several trillion pounds, I think about 20 trillion or something, maybe even 50 trillion, offshore, right, for tax avoidance. And they're saying tax avoidance is not illegal. Tax evasion is illegal. But tax avoidance, but what I'm saying is, why don't we look into going to the wealthy people and saying, look, we're not coming after you or anything like that, but are you ill with greed? Are you suffering from greed? Would you be willing to go into greed counselling? Now, this is a completely new thing. I only came up with this this morning in the bath, right? Would you be willing to go into greed counselling, realise that you have a finite life, and how much money you're needing. Good morning from Thailand, Scotty, says Michael McGuigan. Michael's watching us out in Thailand there. And I've got a Thai as well. It's a great shop. Now, uh, what I was going to say to you, um, so you have the greed counselling and you say, you change the law and you say, no tax avoidance is also illegal. If you've made money in a country, you must keep the money in the country. Think what rich people used to do. They owned a big country house in the agrarian revolution prior to the industrial revolution. Because the industrial revolution, they really just aped the, the, the very wealthy, the aristocracy, who had been given money by William the Conqueror and given estates and land. So what you would actually do here, this is how this works. And this is McClue's thoughts, right? Excellent ideas. You'll always get common sense and the truth from McClue. Wisdom, wisdom, I see. So... What you do is, you had your country house. Now, they shopped in the village. They may have shopped in London, but the money stayed in the country. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, all the big estates got the money from that. First World War, huge money in this country. Then the First World War, boom, shambles. All right, but it was a great level up from that point of view. Albert Pitty's watching, Dinky Doo. You're absolutely right. Just six corporations own the press. There's no such thing as a journalist or journalism, says Everett. Only one good thing in Kirkcaldy, the road out going to Glasgow, says George Mullen. George, you're harsh, harsh, savage even, I would say. Good question, Scotty. I'm a self-confessed greedy sod at times, says John O'Rourke. Scotty, the debt that's owed is owed to ourselves. Tax avoidance is legal. So there you are. Yes, it is legal at the moment because they changed the law to make it legal, right? So change the law back and say, no, if you're due the tax, pay the tax. There's no avoidance, all right? And get the money back into the country. But also say to the rich people, look, you might laugh at this or tell me to push off or whatever, but would you go into greed counselling and give some of the money back? Because the, the, the very, very wealthy people that I've met, they've had pretty insecure childhoods and they think, I need more, I need more all the time. And they'll never, ever, ever have enough. They are suffering, I would say, like a, an alcoholic, a drug addict, whatever. They're addicted to money. And if you said, look, please give us some of it back, just to feed the wee ones. McClure, just home from a wee tour of St Andrews with the Chinese. They say you're massive in Beijing. Scotty McClure is massive worldwide, but very big in Beijing, of course. What happened to the Skype call, says George? We had a guy that said a naughty thing, just a young guy, 
said a naughty word and we lost all the audio because I thought I'm not putting my name to that so we lost all the audio and we had to then edit the the um no sorry we lost the video had to edit the audio and put the audio back up minus the video so there you are i will donate something to you come tuesday says gerald mckay gerald mckay that's very kind of you because scotty mcclue accepts applause or derision on his merits and um if you want to gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue or if you prefer paypal.me forward slash scotty mcclue Paul Crookshanks watching Dinky Doo. Hello, Angie. Dinky Doo says Ron Stewart. Um, is the council tax? It's the council tax that's illegal. Zine Walker, no, no. The council tax has been sorted out now. We were used as the guinea pigs. So there you go. So tell me what you think about that greed counselling. Um, who have we got? Who have we got here? Money is the root of all evil. Uh, so there we are. Um, I've got a Lamborghini and I'm on the highway to hell with it, says Ian. Right, there you go. No, be sensible about this, Ian, right? There's nothing a problem about having a big car or a big house. It's just that if somebody thinks they need to have a trillion pounds to do what with? Because there's no way that will fit into their coffin and their grave will be the same size as yours or mine. Okay. Uh, yes, my friend, I know how to donate, says Gerald Mackay. I'm sure you do, Gerald, and it's very much appreciated. The wonderful John Hodgson is watching a big radio star, wonderful, on Great Yorkshire Radio, one of the country's great radio stations. Great Yorkshire Radio, give it a listen. Go on to greatyorkshireradio.co.uk, www.greatyorkshireradio.co.uk. Go on to Twitter at Great Yorks radio g-r-e-a-t uh, with a capital g capital y o r k s short for yorkshire and radio capital r a d i o great yorkshire radio in fact i'm just going to add that up to the timeline i would like to think that great yorkshire radio are all watching now tremendous stuff uh, like the royal scotty i'm glad you see sense now the money won't fit into the coffins. Well, no, it never would. But the Royals, that's a different setup because that all is coming back into the States. I know there's been a wee bit iffy offshore stuff, but that's the Royals wouldn't know anything about that. So you've got around 20 mil coming in from the Duchy of Lancaster and probably about the same from the Duchy of Cornwall, one going to um, Her Majesty, one going to the, uh, the, the the Prince of Wales. But we don't know what the outgoings are. Remember Mr. Micawber? And it's all very well people going, oh, look what's coming in. What if they were going, oh, look what's gone out. All right. So you might have 20 million coming in, you might have 21 million going out. You see, Mr. Micawber, Mr. Micawber, Scotty McClure, much appreciated, says John Hodgson. No, John Hodgson, much appreciated to you. I love your station, Great Yorkshire Radio. And um, I really miss you on the radio, says General McCarr. I used to laugh at the phone calls. Absolutely. Well, you'll be laughing at the phone calls again because there's discussions happening all the time with major, major players in the industry because they realise that they made a mistake with thinking, Scotty McClure, he must be a fair age now. I wouldn't bother with that. You know, they're now thinking, no, no, he's going to work up until lunchtime in the day of his funeral. Let's take him. So there's discussions happening now. People have sobered up. Um, Stop it with their all propaganda. Says he, not at all. You know, the royals are fantastic. They're the one thing in Britain that cost us 52 pence a year. Between 52 and about 55p. And uh, they're the one thing that's actually working in this country. They're the one constant. And remember, this country's tried to do without a monarchy before, and it was a shambles. Shambles. So there you are. Uh, bring back Scott FM. There's no station like it now, says Paul Crookshanks. Absolutely. And uh, if you think about it, the most amazing thing about Scott FM, it was Scotland's finest radio hour. 
It really was tremendous. Right, folks. Uh, 25 past. We're way over our share point. Everybody, share, 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 share. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, with the world's top talk show, live on Facebook Live, one of the world's greatest broadcast platforms. Fantastic. Uh, should cannabis be made legal for medical reasons? Stephen, no. Cannabis is highly, highly, highly dangerous, right? Don't listen to all this rubbish about, oh, it doesn't do you any harm. It helps, it helps medical people that have got, oh, yes. We hear all that nonsense all the time. What I would suggest is that with the, um, uh, the whole... Uh, food and drug agencies, they should look at decriminalizing certain calibrated amounts if they feel it genuinely brings relief. Yeah? All right? So you could look at that. But no legalization, any of that nonsense. It damages people's brains. What you've got in your body is all you need. Sometimes you need a few vitamin supplements just to be top up occasionally but in actual fact everything is in your body and uh, you know if there's no need for drugs or alcohol or any additional stuff if you want a real high you have nothing and then you are woo so there you go in australia we had the same sex vote it cost taxpayers a lot of money the surveys here cost a lot of money why can't the government give the pensioners an increase instead? Says Erica Mayo, out in Australia. Absolutely, Erica. Yes, an increase for the pensioners. I'm up for that. And also, I think there should be an increase for all public sector workers. It's a piece of nonsense that politicians can award themselves 7% or 10% or something like that and say there's 1% for uh, you know the um, public sector workers. I think bear in mind... I'm in a wheelchair. I don't need those kind of drugs, says Gerald Mackay. Adam Fuller's watching. Thank you, do, Adam Fuller. See if you can do something about that little matter we were talking about. I cope with the pain, says Gerald Mackay. Amazing. So there you are. You're a wonderful man, Gerald. I send you strength. I send you hope. I send you um, as much goodness as you can take on board. So there you are. Uh, Royalty Scotty, did you know that Lizzie and Phil, yes, what are you talking about? Never had so much nonsense in my life, Robert. Uh, Scotty, in the USA, there's a county that makes $10 million a year from the sale of cannabis. It used the cash that built houses, great jobs. Could only be a good thing. Ian, right? Drug dealers and all that stuff. There's many a story of where drug money goes, but not good not good not helping society in the right way so don't give me all that nonsense scotty why are you not national radio says anthony camilleri i don't know anthony as far as i know there is absolutely no reason under the sun why scotty McClure is not on national radio because i think what this country needs now is a national phone in with me scotty McClure. And I'll tell you why, because there's a huge raft of loneliness right across the country, right round the world. And I think this program would go well for half an hour on a television station, right, taking phone calls. Now, I'm working on it because there are television stations that have access to telephones as well, if you get my drift. So there you are. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Okay. Uh, the Doobie Brothers, so I'm listening, says Ian Walker. Um, so what have we got here? Agreed, says Anthony Camilleri. So the sooner Scotty McClure is on national radio, on national telly, if you can't cope with looking at my fizzog, then I'll go on the radio. It doesn't make any difference to me. But I just know that we would do very, very well for a television company because a lot of television companies, this will be the last generation that watch conventional television in the way and manner that you and I did when we were teenagers. So there you go. So they need Scotty McLeod. Scotty McLeod.
Uh, Alan Brown, Scotty McLeod, Alan Brown is watching right now. So there you are. I was running on there. Alan Brown in Washington, D.C. Dinky doing a very warm welcome to the Scotty McLeod Show. Right, it's half past nine. Can we share, 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 share? Can we randomly share throughout the week? Can you keep putting up with me sending you round the shows? This is show number 57. Get on to Scotty McClue's YouTube as well. Scotty McClue YouTube, become a subscriber, and there's something for everyone on there. There's wee treats. Also, we're on Instagram, Scotty McClue one we also broadcast on Periscope, on Twitter. Every single one of you, if you've got a Twitter account, go to at Scotty McClue and follow me. And you'll have to just cope with it because it's not for the faint-hearted. Of course, you get rafts of stuff coming through all the time. So what? You lot are not afraid of work. Scotty, you need to go into the jungle and take your squeeze box. Hello, old pal, says Alan Brown. Alan Brown, you are fantastic. Love to you and your wonderful family in Washington, D.C. One of the greatest educationists. You're a real gentleman, Scotty. Thanks for that. Not at all, Gerald. Thank you for everything you put up with. Thank you for dealing with all the nonsense that you have to deal with. You know, I, I'm, I'm amazed when people are in wheelchairs, people talk to who's pushing them. They go, and how's she getting on? How's, how's, how's he been? All that stuff. A piece of nonsense. So I make a big point of having a good old chat and then perhaps I'll chat to the carer if that comes up my hump and thank the carer for looking after you. Amazing. So there you are. And now then, you brighten Sunday nights up, Scotty McClure. I thank you very much. You brighten Sunday nights up by coming on the Scotty McClure Show globally, worldwide at nine o'clock sharp on Sunday nights. Has Mr. Fox not been back? I saw him dashing today. He must have been going to a meeting, but he was running past me <coughs> early in the morning. Scotty, should we follow Zimbabwe and get rid of our nonagenarian head of state? Uh, certainly not Alfred James Wright, because our nonagenarian head of state has a true, genuine bloodline to the throne of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and the Commonwealth throughout the world. So there you are, proper history. Whereas, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Mann in Zimbabwe, he was just uh, brought in, I think, what, in the 80s? Was that right? Late 70s, early 80s. Are you radiogram, says Ian Walker. What do you mean? Do you mean in terms of weight? Uh, so there you go. Um, all sorts of things. Adam Fuller, dinky do to you. Uh, so there we are. It's a bit of a stushy that's happened out there in Zimbabwe, the former Rhodesia, Salisbury, and that's uh, Harare now, is that right? Harare uh, was Salisbury out in Rhodesia. But uh, I, I know they've had a tough time um, under the present president. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens, how things go. Um, Daniel Watts watching Dinky Doo. Yes, it uh, would not be the same if we do not tune into a very wise Scotty, says Erica Meyer. Erica, I thank you out in Australia there. Which bit are you in again? Do remind me if you can, Erica, so I can tell the world. Um, the Tories, uh, not a lot of people know the words. But it's relevant now. I don't know what you're talking about, Ian, so I'm not going into that. You'll be talking a fair bit of nonsense. Um, I like some of your stuff, Ian, when you tell facts. But uh, so often you've got to sling a big sack of salt over your shoulder when you're watching some of the nonsense you put on there. Dinky do, pal, says Daniel Watt. Daniel Watt, dinky do to you. Lovely to have you with us. Tremendous stuff. Excellent. We like that. Uh, so there we go. Right. Um, keep your um, comments coming, guys. Does everybody know about the time change? Now tell me, is the time change sitting you? Because we're on at 9 o'clock rather than 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. Let me know if that's sitting you. Yes, Scotty, my mum's my carer. She's my best friend. I don't know what I'd do without her. Her name's Margaret Mackay. Margaret Mackay, I send you a big hug and a kiss. And I say thank you, thank you, thank you for looking after Gerald Mackay. Not that you wouldn't because he sounds a fantastic guy. So I think for once 
the two of you have got rather an easy job looking after each other. There you go, Gerald. You and your mum have an easy job looking after each other because of the joy of being in each other's company. Am I right or am I right? Excuse me one second. Little bit of comfort here. Just sort this out. That's it. Oh. It's so hot in the studio there. Sometimes we have to just have a wee dab down. A wee dab. <laughs> wee dab, as they say nowadays. Uh, so there we go. Michael McGuigan. Yes, it suits me just fine, says Erica. Excellent stuff. Um, rebellious Scots to crush. Those are bad words. Robert Hutton. That has not been sung for about 300 years. That was General Wade. Marshall Wade in the days when the Scots were actually rebelling. I wouldn't have used the word rebellion. I used the words rising. The 15 and the 45. Bonnie, Prince Charlie, the Jacobites, the followers of James. Jacobus. So there you are, James the second. Um, Scotty, did you know Mugabe came from Yorkshire? Just say his name backwards and you'll say Ebagum. <laughs> Ebagum. Fantastic. You're bang on, Sir Gerald Mackay. Thank you very much. Nine till ten's perfect with having to get up early, Sir Steve Burrows. So there we are. Malcolm Smith with us. Fantastic, Malcolm. Lovely to have you with us. If you've just joined us, folks, you're watching Scotty McClue. The world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, with you only for one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment, Sunday nights, nine o'clock sharp. Never miss a second of Scotty McClue or you miss a moment of life. Uh, now, who else have we got? Some people think the Commonwealth is just the remnants of previous colonial sojourns. And it's a bit embarrassed, even shameful. No, John, the Commonwealth is a wonderful, wonderful setup. And Her Majesty the Queen has been so skilled in the last um, few years. Well, I mean, since uh, she took over 1953 at dealing with the dismantling of the old British Empire and the um, bringing into being of the Commonwealth. So there you are. It was the British Commonwealth, really. Uh, Scotty, do you think religious buildings should open their doors every night to the homeless? Because isn't that what religion's about? Mind you, I am an atheist. Now, you say you're an atheist, so what is your religion in? So there you are. And, as I said to somebody yesterday in a private discussion, what is God? So you need to know what you're supposedly not believing in, okay? Uh, yes, the time is fine, Scotty's a general. Excellent. Globalism is Lucifer's business, Scotty's as Robert Hutton. Robert, I think you've got a point. I think what we're seeing at the moment is the um, putting together the inception. Well, not quite the inception, because it's been going for a while, of a global oligarchy that uh, controls the money. Yeah. But you see, what these people don't realize, like I, for instance, am one of the richest men in the world. Okay, so I don't have a problem with that at all. One of the richest men in the world. That's how I can la di da on the television and the radio to you lot. But I just don't have any money. Can you see the difference? Being rich is taking a joy of small things. That's what being rich is. I've met so many people with large amounts of money that didn't in any way define them. Why do they think they need the money? It's like somebody folding their arms. They're protecting themselves. They're actually protecting their heart and their vital organs, but they're protecting themselves because they don't feel comfortable. And if you speak to people that have uh, managed to take a lot of money out of the system, happiness is the last thing in their mind, but they don't know that they'll ever find that so they don't really know what happiness is they thought they could buy it with money but you can't you see it's an intangible that you either have or you don't have yeah so there you are so yes globalism uh, to an extent is lucifer's business you're quite right but that will all square up first law of physics action equals reaction okay action equals reaction so if you've got that, the world will adjust to suit that. Yes, there will be an adjusting. 
People who have a go at the Royals, I just wonder if they could do their jobs to Stephen. No, they couldn't, Stephen, because they have a very, very, very tough gig. If I was offered the position of king right now, I would turn it down immediately. You know, I wouldn't even have to go and think about it. I would say, that's not what I want to do with the rest of my life, but thanks for the offer. So there you are. Very good of you. I too am extremely wealthy, and I have less money than you. Dinky do, says Robert. Well, excellent, Robert. We wealthy guys must stick together. We guys of high net worth intellectually must stick together. My religion is the earth, the cosmos, the nature is God. It rules. If God means creation, then nature is the very man. So, Ian, you are a creationist, right? That's what you are. You believe in the creation of nature. You believe in God's work. You believe in the pagan gods, all right? I've met people with money. They're right miserable and want more, says Angie. Well, of course, Angie, because they think, they think wrongly that they need more. But you only want the money if you're wanting to do something with it. So if somebody said to me, do you want that big country house, Scotty? And I said, let me do my sums. I said, the stonemasons bill was 60,000 a year for that, the stonemasons bill. But I have a plan for that house. I'm going to make it the headquarters of Scotty McClue's Dinky Do television and radio, right? I'm going to make it the headquarters of independent media, yeah? And if I can sell enough advertising on independent media, then I can pay the stonemason's bill and I can put the house to good use. Or I'm going to turn it into an hotel or I'm going to turn it into a center for greed counseling and bring the world's richest people over for greed counseling so that they can actually get some release and start to enjoy their life. All right, so there you are. Uh, I could be king, no bother. The man who would be king, that's me. Yeah, absolutely, yes. You are a would-be, Ian. Uh, Janice Gittins watching Dinky Doo, Janice. Lovely, thank you for all your support. Scotty McClue says Dinky Doo. Should I watch Scotty or I'm a celebrity? Get me out of here, says Jonathan Welsh. No, you'll find that Scotty McClue is actually changing the way we consume television. We've got it on Facebook. If you've got the Scotty McClure show there, why would you need to put the telly on? In fact, I would say televisions and radios go off at nine o'clock sharp on a Sunday night because you've got the Scotty McClure show saying dinky do just for you. Neil O'Gormley is watching Dinky Do Neil. Lulls is Ian Walker. So fantastic stuff there. And um, <clears throat> I think having lots of money doesn't make you happy. It can complicate things, of course. Uh, it, it definitely does complicate things because who do you leave it to? Life is finite on earth. Now, we may have more lives. We may come back, but it's a different setup. So you're only really needing enough to get by and to be comfortable. And your definition of what is enough is acceptable. So there you are. Dino the Doug's watching Dinky Doo. Dino the Doug. Uh, Stevie Anderson's watching Dinky Doo to you. So excellent stuff. Lovely to have you with us. Remember to share, 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 share this program. Remember, if you want to join me on LinkedIn, join Scotty on LinkedIn. This will be uploaded to YouTube. You can join me on YouTube. You should be um, able to watch it, catch up on Facebook Live. Excellent stuff uh, on Facebook itself. If you could change one thing, what would it be, says David Randall. If you could change one thing, what would it be? So there we are. My socks. <laughs> no, joking about, I think if I could change one thing, it would be greed counselling. I, I can have 200 channels on my TV, Scotty, but the TV's off for Scotty McClue, says Robert Hutton. Well done, Robert. So it should be. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue, just for you, live on Facebook Live. Sunday nights, nine o'clock sharp make a big thing big push now guys there is nothing in the way of making this the world's top talk show nothing in the way at all 
If you can help with the GoFundMe, gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue or paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue on one word. You'll get these on the Scotty McClue website at wwwscotty McClue.com. Get yourselves on there. Also Instagram, also you now. Follow Scotty McClue, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Periscope. Money's the drug. The more you get, the more you want, says Steve Burrows. I believe this. I came up with this idea of greed counselling this morning because I think some of the world's so-called rich people would actually enjoy benefiting from that so they could get some peace, some release, some joy out of what's left of their lives. So there you are. Sorry, Scotty, I'm late, says Dean of the Doug. Dean of the Doug, the fact is you're here now, right? Obviously, you've missed out on a wonderful show tonight. The people have been amazing. But you're here now, Dean of the Doug. I'm not a creationist. I'm just a silly boy. Also, look at the bright side of life, says Ian Walker. Yes, I think so. Somebody asked me this week. They said, Scotty, is your glass half full or half empty? I said, my glass is brimming over. My cup runneth over. So there you are. It's uh, self-filling and self-fulfilling. Yay, Scotty! The YouTube channel, plenty of entertainment. There's stacks on there. There's something for everyone on Scotty McClure's YouTube channel. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. You're shockingly, horribly and appallingly late. We start at 9 o'clock sharp on Sunday nights, and we've only got one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment for not just one nation, but for every nation, for the whole world. Nation shall speak peace unto nation. The audience, the potential audience for Scotty McClure and Facebook Live is 1.8 billion of you lot. So let's see how near we can get to that figure. But you need to join in. You need to be sharing and sharing and sharing. Every single one of you sharing and sharing and sharing. Jim McKean's watching. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty, what celebrity death shocked you the most? Right? Remember you're old, so don't say Rob Roy. I think it would be Kennedy. I think it's still to this day uh, when John F. Kennedy died. Uh, and also when uh, when one of the popes died. I remember that. I think we'd be talking about um, 1979. Was that right? When we had two popes in uh, relatively quick succession. Scotty, what about the United Nation globalists? No, I think you you do need to get together. You do need to discuss things. Very, very important. But I think that, um, you know, it's lovely to communicate around the world. That's what we are doing right now, this minute. We could be conducting a meeting of everyone in the world right now. Fantastic stuff. Not a problem. So I love that. But all I'm saying is, let's instead of taking, taking, taking. My grandfather used to say, the world is full of McTacks and McGee's. People who take from you and people who give to you. But he said, but there seem to be more McTax. So there you are, people taking or trying to take from you. Somebody trying to eat your lunch. Somebody trying to take away the little thing that you've put together. But get joy in small things. Children who need celebrities asking the poor to give what you can when they tax dodge. It makes me laugh. I would imagine that's a very hollow laugh, David Rendall. I saw a misprint of an American paper. It said, kill Kennedy instead of Kennedy killed. It was a TV program. Yes, I think Kennedy, that was the shock. I remember walking home and I remember seeing the funeral by, was it Telstar Satellite? And it was very snowy and black and white. But uh, my mother was amazed that we could be watching something from America and young John Kennedy saluting his father's coffin. Scotty, what about the United Nations? Yes, we said that. One big family, says Ron Stewart. We are indeed. And the Scotty McClure followers, of which there are many millions throughout the world, we are one big family. Mine was Elvis Presley that shocked me. Do you know, Gerald, I was going to say Elvis as well. That was some shock when Elvis died. Um, George H.W. Bush was in charge um, of the team in Dallas, Texas. Uh, so there we go. What a lot of nonsense. I've never heard so much nonsense, Robert Hutton, and uh, complete nonsense. <laughs> what a lot of rubbish. Right, there you are. Um, and uh, what have we got here? Uh, 
who else is going to take on the poison chalice, says Ian Walker. That's Brexit. Um, worst one for me was the Challenger spaceship explosion, even though they weren't famous. Um, I know, Angie, yes, when, when it just exploded and we lost all the astronauts. That was terrible. Right, um, share again. Let's get sharing. Come on, let's see you sharing. I can see who's sharing. So if you're not sharing, there will be trouble. So let's get sharing right now. Share, 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 share. Here's somebody tried to talk to me on uh, on Facebook when we're actually broadcasting. I love it. Right, can we all share and can we type, 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 type. Come on. Do you hear it? And actually start saying, right, Scotty, I am watching Scotty McClue. And we are live right now. Uh, so there you are. Keep your uh, comments coming. We're very, very busy. And uh, what have we got here? Um, oh, I'm, I'm, there's some right nonsense on here. So I'll tell you, Robert, stop talking rubbish. There you are. Robert Hutton, talking complete and utter rubbish. Never heard so much nonsense in all my life. Uh, lovely to have you with us. If you've just joined us, you're watching Scotty McClue. Uh, the time is coming up to 8 minutes to 10. You sounded like my old teacher there. If I was caught with sweeties in class, you best share or you'll be in trouble, miss. Absolutely. There you go. Of course. So Elvis and Kennedy, I mean, you tell me which one did you think about now? Our two subjects for discussion tonight. We've got a few minutes, so let's say uh, use it well and use it wisely. Um, our uh, main subjects for discussion tonight. Let's recapitulate. Recapitulation. And we can tidy that up afterwards. All right. Honesty rocks your world, Scotty, says Robert. Yes, it rocks my world, I'll tell you. It's fantastic. The celebrity for me was uh, Barney. The program wasn't the same without him. So there you are. Barney McGrew, Cuthbert, Dibble and Grub. Trumpton was never the same. Now, do you know, I was trying to remember that this week, Ian. You and I must be septic. Because I was trying to remember that this week. I could say Hugh, Hugh, Barney McGrew, and then I knew Dibble was in it, but I couldn't get Cuthbert and Grub. So there you are. John Lennon. Yes. That was a shock when John Lennon got shot. And I'm so sorry that happened. An excellent guy. Uh, on the war situation, says Gerald Mackay. Yes, do tell us. Tell us more about that. So there you are. Uh, keep your comments coming. We've only got a few minutes. Time's very, very tight. Stephen Jewers joined us. Welcome, Stephen. Lovely to have you with us. And tremendous stuff. Our main subjects for discussion. We're talking about uh, it's not too late to give up Brexit. Should the Brexiteers pay if we go ahead and the non-Brexiteers not pay? Or also, should you be able to say you're opting out of Brexit and you're staying in Europe as an individual and keeping your European passports? Septic as Lemsip, says Ian Walker. And there you are. Excellent. Lots to talk about. Nice to have you all with us. I'm just looking at Facebook here. Sorry for looking away, but I'm just looking at all the wonderful things that's happening on Facebook here. Tremendous. Can you all share? Have you shared? I'm watching. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Come on, get sharing. Every single one of you get sharing so that I can see out because I can see who's sharing and I can see who's not. There we go. Nearly lights out. Yes, it is nearly lights out. What a fabulous program tonight. Thoroughly enjoyed doing it for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Do me a big favor, as I say, and get sharing and sharing and sharing throughout the world. Very important. Let me just try something here to see if it works. Right? It's a bit of a long shot. Nope, that's no good. Right, there we go. I went upside down. I was just seeing if something worked there. Uh, and, and we could get that. Thanks, Scotty. Another fantastic show as always. There are. Yes, um, Donald Trump, is he helping to make things better or worse? Well, I suppose it depends on your point of view. When people say somebody's gaining, who is gaining? That's always the question you have to ask yourself. Who is actually gaining? Now, guys, can I beg? Beg for a favour, right? Um, keep sharing randomly throughout the week. Don't get fed up with me sharing stuff because that's a downer. That's when we um, don't build. Where's the clarinet? 
I mean the squeeze box it sounds the same. Thomas Connolly's watching and Andy Grant is watching. There you are. I do have I happen to have one on me, the squeeze box. Here we go. So, yeah. so I may just give you a tune, right? If you're good. If you're good. <laughs> Never a dull moment, Scotty McClure in the squeeze box. I didn't say I was particularly good. Uh, right, so there you are, Gary Drummond's joined us. No, no, not the box, not the box. He says, excellent stuff. Keep helping, Gerald. Yes, absolutely very, very important. And, as I say, also, get yourselves onto LinkedIn, get yourselves onto Twitter. Anything to do with Scotty McClue, follow, 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 join, 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 and share, share, share. But most importantly of all, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. That's what it's all about. Till all the seas gang dry, absolutely, and the rocks melt with the sun. So there we go. We'll see what this week brings, but I can tell you now there is nothing in the way of the march of Scotty McClue. So uh, we've got meetings arranged with big players. We'll see what gives. We'll see um, which one we go with, right? Uh, Mr. Salmon decided which one he would go with. The, 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 I don't know if it was the highest bidder or the best bidder or the top bidder, but um, as a broadcaster, we'll see what comes. But there's absolutely nothing to stop the march of Scotty McClue. I missed half the show. Have a great week, guys, says Dave Harley. Dave, dinky-doo to you. Lovely to have you with us. It's been a wonderful show. So there you are. When will we, will we hear you on Take the Floor, says Alfred James Wright. Yes, I know, because Robbie retired from Take the Floor, didn't he? And um, I don't know, is the program uh, still running? I haven't heard it for a while, but uh, that would be quite good to get some good Scottish music on. Uh, yes, it has been a wonderful show, and uh, have a great week to every single one of you. Um, wonderful stuff. Uh, anybody else want to come on just before we finish up? We've got about a minute left. So as I say, use it well and use it wisely. I've thoroughly enjoyed being with you tonight. Tremendous. Great to have the input from all around the globe as well. Very, very important. So thanks for that. And um, do let me know. Um, what else are we getting? Right, I'm not reading any nonsense. Billy Andrew, the spiritual medium, has joined us. Excellent stuff. Night, night, friends, says Ron Stewart. Does anybody want to say good night? Does anybody want to shout out before Scotty McClure goes? Get yourself on to patreon.com, P A T R E O N dot com, and become a patron because uh, for five dollars we can give you shouts out, and uh, for ten dollars. We can give you a little commercial. So there you are, give you a good old mention there. So that would be excellent. If anybody else wants to say good night to the pals, now is your chance, because I am just about to push off. So excellent stuff. Thanks very much for joining us. This is Scotty McClue saying dinky-doo to every single one of you. I will sing the song now. Are you ready? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care everybody as you go goodbye everybody of wait a zane au revoir and a cheery oh dinky do every day this is scotty mcclue saying thanks for watching until next week at the same time gwwp god willing weather permitting i will say to every single one of you have a fabulous week and dinky do scotty mcclue has left the building oh